The following is a production of the Washington College of Law at American University. Hi, my name is Jamie Raskin. I'm a professor of constitutional law at American University's Washington College of Law. And I'm also director of our program on law and government. And part of that program is the Marshall Brennan Constitutional Literacy Project, where we take law students who've done well in constitutional law, we send them out to public high schools in the District of Columbia and in Montgomery County, Maryland, to teach a course in constitutional literacy. Um, one of the great heroes of our program is Mary Beth Tinker. Uh, for having stood up for her First Amendment rights when she was uh, just a kid. And of course, um, her victory became a watershed moment in the history of the constitutional rights of young people. Um, Mary Beth Tinker today remains deeply involved in the cause of civil rights and civil liberties and uh, of course harbors a special passion for the rights of students. And she's been very involved with our program and we're very grateful to her. Um, this interview that you're about to see uh, was done uh, on the 40th anniversary of the Tinker decision. It, of course, was handed down by the Supreme Court in 1969. And so we did a 40th anniversary interview with Mary Beth to talk about what actually happened in the case, uh, what all of her memories and recollections are of the events that transpired um, in the Des Moines School District, uh, what happened with her family, what happened with her friends, what happened in the school, and then how the events that led to Tinker versus Des Moines School District influenced her life and shaped the person that she became today. So uh, we hope that you enjoy it and that you check out the special symposium issue of the American University Law Review on the occasion of the 40th anniversary of Tinker versus Des Moines, which talks about the impact of that case on American constitutional jurisprudence. I was born in Burlington, Iowa, and my father was a Methodist preacher, and there were several themes that ran through my life. I have to thank my parents for that because they really instilled these in us. My parents were very strong spiritual people, and they instilled in us that, for one thing, we should use our talents, skills, experiences to take the world forward, to make the world a better place while we're here on Earth. And so that has really directed my life quite a bit. And there's a prayer that my parents used to like. It starts out, Lord, make me an instrument of thy peace. It's St. Saint, Saint Francis, I think, of Assisi. And that really has directed my life. Your father was a minister, Methodist minister, is that right? Yes, he was a Methodist minister. But then my parents later became involved with the Quakers. So. Their idea, which I also embraced, of a better world, part of that would be a world of more peace and less war. And that was a very important part of what we were going to, of how we envisioned a better world, and also a world uh, with justice. And as I later became a nurse, I started to see that in terms of statistics about um, health disparity and things like that. But a world of peace, justice, and less suffering is, is the way that they All right, so re reconstruct for us to the best of your ability, 1965. One of the most important things about my life in 1965 was the political times that we found ourselves in, the historical times, because through the early 1960s and the late 50s, the uh, modern civil rights movement was really building up. And so in 1963, you had Birmingham, the letter from Birmingham by, by Martin Luther King, the Children's Crusade, where 2,000 young people were arrested in Birmingham. Uh, 1963. Um, but the, what, what was your consciousness of all yes. that? You were 11 years old yes, in 1963. That's a good question. We were. My mother really became an activist when she was only 14 years old, and then and that had to do with um, equality of conditions in Corpus Christi, Texas, where her minister had them do a survey around housing and electricity in the um, colored part of town. So. As she, this was only in 1935, so right at the time when Thurgood Marshall was busy, Marshall was busy suing the University of Maryland and the University of Missouri, my mother was in Texas in the early stages of her involvement with the civil rights movement. And so then through the 40s, uh, she married my father, they moved to Iowa, they started uh, getting involved with the NAACP and raising us in the youth chapters of the NAACP. And my sister wrote a winning essay on what does the Emancipation Proclamation mean to me when I was just maybe about 
eight or nine years old, and this was a big event in our lives. Because this was your sister? My sister Bonnie. Bonnie, uh-huh. Won Who's the, an older sister? She's my old. sister Bonnie is five years older than me. And when she was about 13 or 14 years old, she won the national contest on what the Emancipation Proclamation means to me, which was a contest sponsored by the NAACP. So we all went to the national awards ceremony where she won this. And we used to sell these um, freedom tickets, I think it was, uh, I can't remember the exact name, but the NAACP would have kids go out and sell these um, tickets. And then we would pick at the uh, Capitol building in Des Moines for equal rights and and housing rights in Des Moines and and my mother uh, I remember she would go to the sort of poor area of town and, and she got real involved with social justice issues and she would tell us stories about how you know little children were uh, so poor and their landlords wouldn't keep up the place and so you know the mother would tell her about a rat running across the child's face in the middle of the night and as a child these stories were so important to me and it made me feel so much that I needed to do something to to make that So you, you had a very politically conscious upbringing as a kid? Yes we were very um, we were our upbringing was completely involved with the issues of the day and the issues of our day had to do with the civil rights movement and then later the Vietnam War and because of my parents' religious um, background, my father being a preacher and my mother also being very involved with the, um, with the church, it was all tied up with spirituality and that this was the way, the right way to live your life. It had to do with increasing the peace, not only in the world as far as war and peace, but also in families and decreasing the um, pain and suffering that families and, and children were facing. So did the whole family travel to Washington for the anti-war march with Coretta Scott King and Dr. Benjamin Spock? No, the whole family didn't go to the anti-war march in 1965. We did go to the 1963 march on Washington that Martin Luther King spoke at. Oh, I didn't know that. You were there? But, yes, but the... Um, 1965 yeah. Peace March, we didn't all go to that. My I sister see. went and my brother John went. And then when they came back to Des Moines, I was 13. And um, Were you too they young told to us. A, why didn't you not go? That. I don't remember why I didn't yeah. happen to go to that yeah. um, march. But by 1965, I know that we already had heroes through the civil rights movement that had risked their lives to stand up for voting rights, children that you know, we saw who were facing dogs and water hoses on TV, and these were our heroes. So by the time we got to 1965 and um, the Vietnam War started building up, we had so many examples of strong people that stood up for what they believed and that really made a difference 